Hello everyone and welcome back to Scandinavian Design 101. I'm Sanna. I'm Andreas and we're two Swedes and we love design. Today we're gonna yet again talk about some of the many chairs designed by the Danish architect uh, Hans J. Wegner. And yeah, J actually stands for Jorgensen. And if you want to know more about his life and career, just check out our previous videos about him. Mm. Even though Wegner was a highly versatile designer, he is mainly associated with chairs, and they can be divided into different categories. The kind of traditional Windsor chairs and China chairs we've talked about in a previous video, and of course the round chairs, best known of them is without doubt the JH501 or the chair, yeah. but also the Spanish conference chairs, the shell chairs, and the Sabak chairs. That's a lot of S. Yeah, a lot of chairs. <laughs> so, moving on. Uh, but today we're going to talk about, we're not going to talk about any of these. No. Uh, instead, we're going to focus on another type of his iconic chairs, the folding chairs. Yes. When early modernist designers started influencing the international design scene in the early 20th century, new kind of furniture started to emerge. And according to the modernists, traditional bulky chairs and sofas had no place in the modern home. Um, they were heavy, unhygienic, and occupied a lot of space. In small apartments, as well as yeah, modern villas, modern type of chairs were needed. New materials like uh, tubular steel were introduced, and the chairs were suddenly light and often uh, kind of industrial looking. But modernism was more than just aesthetics, it was a political and cultural movement with the aim to uh, introduce fundamental changes in everyday life. In the 1920s the focus was set on relaxation and well-being. As a result, designers like Charlotte Perrion and uh, Altos started designing resting chairs and low easy chairs perfect to relax in. In 1933, the Danish architect and educator Kåre Klint designed the deck chair, highly inspired by the chairs often seen on the many luxurious uh, ocean liners at the time yeah, carrying passengers between Europe and North America. Bringing the deck chair into private homes was well in line with modernism, and Klint was especially fond of the folding mechanism. The large and comfortable chair could easily be stored or transported. Yeah. That's very mm, good. Yeah. The young Wegener was obviously inspired by Klint when he started experimenting with a folding chair of his own. But he also studied Central European furniture like the Barcelona chair designed in 1929 by Mies van der Rohe and Lili Reich. It's not a folding chair, but the shape of the metal framework reminded him of one. Even though Wegener got inspired by modernist shapes, he refused to compromise on comfort, mm. and modern materials like steel and aluminum felt too sterile for Wegener, who preferred wood. In 1946, he participated in a competition to design furniture for a man's room. <laughs> Sounds Can disgusting. I... Yeah. <laughs> and drew a sketch of a folding chair called the fireplace chair. Mm. But the sketches shows a chair looking mm. much like a wooden Barcelona chair. Mm. An important difference was the shape of the back legs. Uh, by doing so, the chair would lie completely flat when folded. Yeah. And three years later, in 1949, Wegner's most iconic folding chair was born, the JH512, produced by cabinet maker Johannes Hansen. The small size and uh, foldable construction made it perfect for the small apartments of the time. When de designing it, Wegner was inspired by the North American Shakers, a religious sect known for their handcrafted furniture. The Shakers often hung their chairs on the wall when they weren't used, and Wegner found this idea interesting. He added humps to the stretcher between the legs, and this made it possible to hang the folding chair on a hook on the wall. For uh, upholstery, he chose woven rattan, a strong as well as yeah, beautiful material. Are they called shakers because of the... Uh, they are called shakers because they were shaking. Yeah. They When they were praying, they they and shaked. So, they and like what's it called when 
Tala i tungor in, in Swedish. Yeah, well they... they well they speak speak, crazy. speak with speak <laughs> Spoken in... A, they, they're, they're speaking in a made-up language. Yeah, when they, when they yeah, talk yeah. to God. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we, we will only focus on their furniture, oh, I okay. think. Oh. Um, yeah. And now back to the, to the chair. Uh, to avoid having a bare piece of wood in the front... A practical handle was added, and this gave the chair its uh, highly characteristic look. The result is a highly exclusive looking chair, but all details actually have a practical function. Mm. The rational construction of the frame makes the chair fold perfectly. It can easily be stored hanging on the wall, and the stretcher curves to ensure it can't be pulled out. Yeah. And that's of course a good thing. You don't want to. What was the purpose of the of the rattan on the seating? Uh, the rattan is like a strong material, and it's a good material to use. Yeah. And uh, it has a kind of complex complex decorative uh, yeah, shape on the seat. But it has to have that because you can't really uh, the. the the ha- the handle mm. makes it uh, impossible to have a like a fully covered seat, mm-hmm. and because it's uh, like the the wood there, you can't uh, yeah. uh, twine it ah, around there. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah. Okay. I get it. So it has a, a practical function, even yeah, yeah, though it's yeah. a decorative element. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah. Wigner continued to develop the concept the following years, mm. and in 1950, the dolphin chairs were launched, also by Johannes Hansen. Mm. It was an attempt to create a folding chair with armrests. The shape was way more playful and organic, with armrests shaped like oars, mm. and a high back with a comfortable neck cushion hanging from two small horns. Mm. The folding mechanism let the chair fold flat, thanks to hinges placed between the armrest and the back legs. Two versions were available, the easy chair JH510 and the resting chair JH511. An ingenious feature on the resting chair was the wooden bracket under the chair that automatically pulled up the front legs when the chair was folded. A non-folding prototype of the resting chair was also developed with decorative V-shaped front legs. And these ones are very beautiful, I think. Yeah, they are. They are very sculptural and almost looks like a hybrid between uh, Wegner and Finjul, I think, uh, with this uh, 3D uh, sculptures. Yeah, I would love to have these on my balcony out there. Yeah, really, but they are extremely expensive and extremely (laughs) rare, so Mm. we will keep on dreaming. (laughs) Yeah. And simultaneously with the dolphin chairs, Wagner worked on a non-folding easy chair. Already in 1950, the somewhat more industrialized easy chair uh, CH25 was launched by the manufacturer Carl Hansen. At the first glance, it looked like a folding chair, but the legs were fixed, and the exclusive rattan webbing was replaced by paper cord. Um, An exclusive version, the CH27, was launched the following year. Uh, Just like the Dolphin, uh, it had uh, horns possible to hold a neck cushion, and the upholstery was rattan twined in a complex pattern. I thought we were talking about folding chairs in this episode. Yeah, but they are actually in the same family family because they they have the the same shape, and they were inspired. He was inspired by his folding chairs when he designed these chairs. Yeah, but they are obviously not as uh, as fun as the dolphins, for example. No. No, no. Some other folding chairs by Wigner are the pincer chair mm-hmm. designed in 1956, the resting chair JH524 mm-hmm. designed in 1958, <laughs> and the Asian inspired garden chair JH603 designed in 62. Yeah, and they are a bit more boring looking yeah. chairs. I mean, no. for example, this. Asian inspired chair it's ju- it's only funny because of the long uh, what do you call it uh, tassels. tassels yeah <laughs> the, the the huge tassels on on this but why cushion. is it Asian inspired I can't see it no perhaps not but it's it's uh, it's fun just because of that but otherwise it looks like garden chairs it does today but they all do yeah they do folding chairs are like right. yeah yeah they they are but we love that's the... not a bad thing no 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 not at all and he was uh, way before his time, because uh, a lot of chairs looks like this today. today yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. True that. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and this was uh, the end of the episode. Yep. Hope you found it interesting. Mm -hmm. And if you did, uh, you should check out our uh, previous videos. We have a lot of videos about Wagner and other designers and a lot of other things too. So yeah. check them out. Please do. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.